Hi everyone, my name is Jack, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. The case of Sarai Sierra, she went across the ocean to meet her death. The high-profile case of an American girl photographer named Sarai Sierra 10 years ago stirred the world and brought the intelligence services of two countries located on different continents to their feet. The U.S. citizen disappeared without a trace during her photo tour in Istanbul as if vanishing into thin air. This story was widely covered in the press, and the situation and circumstances were so strange that it gave rise to a lot of rumors and conspiracy theories. Despite active, large-scale, and timely searches, it was unfortunately not possible to find the girl alive. Her body was found in the historic center of the city, near the walls of Saraiburnu. But how did it happen that in a white day in a popular tourist spot so simply took a person's life and no one even noticed it. To understand this case, it is necessary to restore the whole chain of events that led to this tragedy, and now we will try to do it together. Sarai Sierra, Early Years. Sarai Sierra was born in New York in 1979 on November 9th and became the second child in a large family. She was brought up together with her older brother David and younger sister Christina. Their parents, Dennis and Bethany Syme Jimenez, were of Puerto Rican descent, but emigrated to the United States in 1973, settling in Manhattan, where their children were born. Shortly after moving, the couple joined the local Protestant community and became evangelical Christians. They brought up all their children in strictness, following the religious canons of their adopted faith. The family attended church regularly, socialized with other members of the community, and the children attended Sunday school. Sarai grew up to be an active, creative person, and also stood out for her strong-willed but rather complex character. Unlike her younger sister Christina, who was a quiet, obedient, and very modest girl, Sarai was considered a rebel and a hooligan. But at the same time, she respected her parents, recognizing their undisputed authority. In the Jimenez family home, there were strict rules to which all members of the family obeyed. This applied to the daily routine of its inhabitants, many everyday moments, as well as norms of behavior. For example, the daughters were not allowed to socialize with boys, go on dates, or be out of the house after nine o'clock in the evening. All their friendly contacts were controlled, and parents always knew where and with whom their children were. In fact, Sarai's entire life revolved around home, school, and church, and her social circle was limited to the people in those places. The active, energetic, socially-oriented girl was bored and cramped within the framework in which she was kept, but her parents were sure that they were doing the right thing for the good of their children. During her school years, Sarai planned to enter a pedagogical university and become a teacher in the field of culture or arts. But closer to the end of her studies, she became interested in psychology and began to think about connecting her future profession with this field of activity. During one of the meetings of the religious community, slender, dark-haired beauty attracted the attention of a young man named Stephen Sierra. He was the first to approach her and made an excuse to talk to her. Sarai was barely 18 years old at the time, and her new acquaintance was seven years older than her. But despite the age difference, with the approval of their parents, the young people began dating. Stephen immediately liked Dennis and Bethely, who thought that this decent, polite, and honest young man would be a good match for their daughter. Most likely, Sarai was not madly in love with the guy, but agreed to marry him, mostly for the sake of finally moving out of her parents' house and freeing herself from such tight control. It should be noted that Sarai had a good relationship with her parents, but she wanted some freedom to live her own life and plan her own future. Less than a year after meeting, in February 1999, the couple got married. The bride was 19 years old at the time, and the groom was 26 years old. Soon after, the couple moved to the state of Michigan, where Stephen's parents lived. For Sarai, this move was a real event, 
because before that she spent all her conscious life, practically without staying in his native New York. The change of scenery did her good, and in a new place she seemed to revitalize. Sarai enjoyed shopping for things for her new home, making it cozy, enjoying new acquaintances and new places. She got a job at a local dental office as a receptionist, and was thinking about getting a college degree after all. However, Sarai soon became pregnant and had children, first a boy and then a girl. Entry into the university had to be postponed because the young woman was completely absorbed in motherhood and enjoyed it. A couple of years later, the family Sierra, with two children, again decided to move, and this time they went to sunny California, settling in the picturesque neighborhood of Silver Lake in Los Angeles. Here Stephen was offered a job, but soon the couple realized that the money he was earning, they do not have enough to live on. Then, having consulted, they decided to return back to New York and settled in a modest rented apartment located near the house of the Jimenez family. At that time, the couple faced serious financial problems. Sarai was still at home with the children, and her husband had to survive on casual income, because of which they periodically had to get into debt. The situation began to change for the better when the children went to school and the young mother got a job at an advertising agency. Stephen had by then found a permanent job as a bus driver on one of the city routes. A new hobby. Closer to 30 years, when the children have already grown up and life stabilized, Saraya again remembered her long-standing plans to get a higher education. By that time, she was not interested in the pedagogical faculty at all, and Sarai chose the Faculty of Psychology, entering one of the local universities. However, Sarai soon grew cold to her studies, and the boring hours of lectures caused her boredom. She decided to look for herself in another sphere and choose an occupation that would be to her liking, inspire her, and allow her to express herself. Since Sarai had always been a creative person, good at drawing and seeing the beauty in everything, she became interested in photography and soon joined a well-known New York photography community to be able to develop in this direction. She was widely recognized as having a real talent. Sarai was able to choose the right angles and harmoniously build compositions, making incredible in its beauty shots. Even professionals praised her work for her creativity and vision. In early 2012, on the advice of her colleagues, Sarai created a page in one of the popular social networks where she began to post her work. The success did not take long, and other users began to subscribe to the young woman's profile by the thousands, enthusiastically commenting on each of her works. In a few months, she became a real star, and the number of her subscribers continued to grow exponentially. Such a furor literally dizzy her head, Sarai felt that she could achieve more, that she wanted to develop and improve in this direction. So she made a proposal to organize a group photo tour in search of beautiful and unusual locations in different parts of the world. Sarai Sierra started with small trips around her native country, specializing in shooting architectural ensembles and various historical monuments. Her images were a great success, and she decided not to stop. Sarai wanted to travel to Istanbul, one of the most ancient and beautiful cities in the world, to capture its sites and historical sites. It should be noted that her parents were not thrilled with this idea, because she had never left the country before and never left home for so long. But Sarai was adamant. In addition, she had to be accompanied on the trip by her best friend Magdalena. As it turned out, Sarai's family was in crisis and her relationship with her husband was falling apart. Perhaps part of the reason for her idea of a photo tour on the other side of the world was a desire to get away, change her surroundings, and reflect on what was happening in her family from a distance. Sarai had lived in a strict framework for too long, and now she was eager to do something she wanted to do, something her soul demanded. During that period, her husband's social media account began to show strange postings and statuses, he philosophized about the value of marriage, about love and mutual respect between husband and wife, and also noted that he would not cheat on his other half, even if the marriage hangs in the balance. 
In one of the posts, Stephen opaquely hinted that his spouse was unfaithful to him, but a few hours later he deleted the publication, leaving the questions that appeared under it unanswered. Stephen obviously didn't feel happy and loved and tried to show it to everyone through his social media page. Soraya was experiencing similar torment, but kept it to herself, trying not to complain and focus on her creativity. The long-awaited trip. Shortly before the planned tour, Sarai learned that her best friend would not be able to travel with her because of problems at work. The young woman was very upset, but did not change her plans because she had been going to it for too long. Sarai's relatives were concerned about the fact that she would fly alone to a foreign country across the ocean, but she assured them that everything would be fine, promising to call, write, and send photos every day. In addition, Sarai was also planning to visit Germany and Austria, where she had several commercial photography assignments already scheduled. Her entire trip was literally scheduled by the hour, and she was not going to deviate from the schedule. On January 7, 2013, a young American woman boarded a flight from New York to Istanbul. She was carrying a small amount of cash, a smartphone, a tablet, a fairly inexpensive DSLR camera, and several lenses designed for professional photography. Upon arrival, Sarai called her family, informing them that she had arrived safely and was on her way to check into the hotel she had booked in advance. It should be noted that she had a rather modest budget, so she had to stay in a remote area, which the locals considered unsafe. After leaving her things in the room and changing her clothes from the road, Sarai Sierra immediately went to the nearest metro station to get to the historic city center. She wandered the streets of Istanbul until nightfall, photographing its beauty and savoring every shot she took. In the evenings, she would call her parents and husband via video call, sharing her impressions and her plans for the next day. She would also process fresh shots and post them to her social media accounts new friend. As it later turned out, Sarai was accompanied in Istanbul by a young man named Thailan. They met on social networks in the middle of 2012, and it was Thailan who convinced the American to fly to Turkey. For several months, they actively corresponded and became very close during this time. Sarai completely trusted her new acquaintance. They saw each other almost every day, and together visited various attractions. The guy was a native of Istanbul, so he knew the city like the back of his hand, and arranged for Saraya exciting excursions to the most interesting, sometimes unusual places. After a week's stay in Turkey, the photographer had a trip planned to a couple of European countries, where, as I said, she arranged several commercial photo shoots. Here, Sarai saved money on hotel accommodation, because she agreed to be hosted by her subscribers, who had been following her work for a long time. These moments were negotiated and agreed in advance, so at the airport in Vienna, she was met by a young man in whose house she stayed for a couple of days. The Austrian acquaintance was a few years older than Sarai. He himself was fond of photography and admired her works, so he was eager to communicate personally with such a talented photographer. The trip went according to plan. Sarai visited all the places she had planned and met everyone she had arranged to meet. On the third day, she flew to Berlin, where she was also met at the airport by her subscribers who gave her a tour of the city. After finishing all her business in Germany, the photographer went to the airport again and returned to Istanbul, where she planned to stay for two more days before returning home. Upon arrival, she was met by Talon, with whom they spent the day driving around the city, and afterward they went to a popular local bar together. It was after midnight when the Turk escorted Sarai to her hotel, where they said goodbye. A Mysterious Disappearance in a Foreign Country On January 21, 2013, the last day of her photo tour, Sarai called her parents and husband to let them know what time and what flight she was taking to New York. She had never been away from home for so long before, 
So everyone was happy that her trip was finally coming to an end. However, before leaving, Sarai decided to take one last walk around the city and take some more beautiful shots for her account. At the appointed time, Sarai's father arrived at the airport to pick up his daughter because her husband was at work and could not make it. He arrived early because he was afraid of getting stuck in traffic and not being on time. They announced the arrival of the plane. All the passengers got off, but Sarai was not among them. Her phone was also unavailable, and all attempts to contact her were futile. Then Dennis waited a little longer, and then, concerned about his daughter's absence, went to the representatives of the airline. However, Dennis was literally shocked when they informed him that a passenger with such a name had not boarded the aircraft. Dennis immediately called Stephen and informed him of what had happened, saying that it was necessary to immediately organize a search. Sarai's husband first contacted the hotel where his wife was staying in Istanbul, but there he was told that her belongings were still in the room and she had not checked out, although she should have done so yesterday, and did not appear in the hotel for the second day. This information caused a real panic among the family members because they did not know where Sarai was and did not understand how to proceed. Stephen, who had access to his wife's accounts, decided to check them, looking for some clues. There, he found his wife's correspondence with Tylan, which seemed very suspicious to him. Nevertheless, he decided to contact the Turk himself to find out what he knew, but Tylan claimed that he had seen the missing woman the day before the planned departure, and before the flight she did not even call him, although she promised. Sarai's family immediately reported the incident to the American embassy in Turkey, and a day later, a large-scale search operation was organized on the spot, for which a special unit was even created. Almost immediately, Sarai's husband and parents flew to Istanbul, deciding that they needed to be personally involved in the search. Besides, not much time had passed since her disappearance, and there was a high probability of finding her alive. Investigating Police Officers The first thing decided to determine the social circle of the American, and talk to those who saw her shortly before she disappeared. To testify were called employees of the hotel where she stayed, as well as her friend Tylan. The hotel manager stated that he last saw Ms. Sierra the night before she left. She was leaving with a small bag and a camera in hand. She was supposed to check out later, but never showed up at the hotel again, and the next morning they received a call from her worried husband, who informed them that Sarai's belongings and documents were still at the hotel. The receptionist also described the clothes Saraya was wearing that day. The situation with Tilan was much more interesting and ambiguous. First, the guy's name was actually Tarkan, and why he introduced himself to his new acquaintance with an assumed name was unclear. Secondly, they had been in close contact for several months before their meeting, and Sarai had arrived in Istanbul at his invitation. All of this suggested that there was a romantic relationship between them, but Tarkan himself categorically denied it, claiming that they were only friends. The next stage of the investigation was to recreate in as much detail as possible the route that Sarai took that day. For this purpose, her cell phone data was checked, as well as street CCTV footage. Thus, it was established that the young woman took the subway to Sultanahmet District, visited the promontory between the Bosphorus Strait and the Golden Horn Bay, visited Eminonu Market, but there she was lost in a large crowd of tourists. Then her trail was retraced to the subway, where she was going down to go to the Sarayburnu walls, but she soon disappeared from the camera's view again. Frightening Discovery The searchers decided to go to the ruins of the Sarayburnu walls to comb the area and interview people. Maybe someone remembered a lone woman with a camera in her hands. After several hours, the search was successful, if you can call it that. The body of a young woman with no signs of life was found near the ruins of the walls of ancient Constantinople. It was covered with an old dirty blanket, so it was not conspicuous. Investigators assumed that it was in this blanket that Sierra was brought here. 
Forensics believe the body had been there for about 10 to 12 days before it was found. There were no clothes on the lower part of the body, which immediately prompted a version of violence which was later confirmed by experts. The autopsy revealed that Sierra died from a blow to the head with a blunt, heavy object, but there were also several hematomas on her body and a couple of ribs were broken. In addition, pathologists found particles of epithelium and blood under Sarai's fingernails, and this indicated that she had defended herself and scratched the perpetrator. The crime looked strange and even ridiculous because the victim's bag, smartphone, and camera were stolen. But at the same time, she was wearing gold earrings, wedding ring, and expensive watch, which immediately caught the eye. All that could be found on camera footage from the area was a young woman who looked like Sarai, filming something on her phone, and then a man approached her, either hitting her or pushing her, and then they both disappeared from the camera's view. The attacker was not immediately identified. Versions and conspiracy theories Almost instantly, the information was leaked to the media, almost provoking an international scandal. The whole point is that from the TV screens and from the pages of newspapers every day appealed to people to help in the search for the missing American woman and tell if anyone knows anything, but at the same time, the investigation was silent. And when the body was discovered, the situation became even more confusing. Many people wondered why a young married woman suddenly flew alone across the ocean. What was she doing in Istanbul and Europe? And with what funds had she traveled there? It all looked suspicious indeed, and investigators initially thought that Sarai had gone to see her lover, Talen, aka Tarkan, and afterward flew to another man in Austria. But both her buddies denied being intimate with the victim. Later, it turned out that the man who sheltered Sarai in Vienna has a criminal record, in connection with which there was a version that he could use the American as a drug courier. But a thorough check did not confirm this speculation. There were also rumors that Sarai could work for the U.S. intelligence services and to collect information in other countries. Allegedly, hence the money for intercontinental flights. This version looked untenable, so it was not even seriously considered. The investigation of this high-profile case was carried out by Turkish Special Services, together with the FBI, but at first, they did not have any serious leads. Only a few weeks later, the police came to the alleged perpetrator, a previously convicted and unemployed guy named Tal Sali, collecting waste paper on the city streets, but it was not possible to communicate with him because almost immediately after the crime, he borrowed money from relatives and left the country presumably going to Hatay province, where he illegally crossed the border with Syria. After obtaining a warrant, police searched the suspect's home, where they took a sample of his DNA and compared it with skin particles and seminal fluid found on the body of the murdered woman. After that, the last doubts were dispelled. Tal Sali was the perpetrator of the crime. In addition, the victim's phone was last switched on in the neighborhood where he lived. When it became known that the criminal fled to Syria, the special services lost all hope of getting to him. But soon, fate itself gave them an unexpected surprise. This guy was detained while trying to cross the border illegally again, but this time he was trying to return to Turkey. He joined the rebels in Syria and obtained firearms but was injured in the conflict and decided he would be safer at home. However, he made his way back with his weapon, which was the initial reason for his arrest. But the local police soon realized who was in their hands and immediately reported him to the security services. When Tal Sali was brought in for questioning, his story was literally discouraging with horrific details. He saw a young woman on a hiking trail along the walls of Serebernu, and for a few minutes he simply admired her and watched her taking pictures. When he got closer, Sarai tried to ask him something using gestures but due to the language barrier, he never understood what she wanted. However, he noticed a brand new iPhone in her hands and an expensive camera around her neck. As Sarai walked on, he followed her, already determined to rob her. It was getting dark outside, and there were no other people near the wall, at least in sight. 
At one point, Sierra turned around and, as it seemed to him, took a picture of him. That action became a trigger of sorts. Tal Sali grabbed a boulder and lunged at Sierra, hitting her hard in the head. After that, they literally rolled together down to the ruins of the wall, hence probably bruises and broken ribs on Sarai's body. Then Tal Sali, taking advantage of the unconsciousness of the victim, decided to commit violent acts of intimate nature. The perpetrator then delivered another severe blow to the head to finish Sarai off. Tal Sali took the victim's bag, her camera and phone, and walked away. On his way, he came across the same blanket that someone had thrown away and decided to return to cover the victim's body with it. By that time, it was finally dark outside, and the chances of meeting someone at the wall were minimal. Once back, the perpetrator dragged the body a little to the side, positioning it so that it would not be visible from the hiking path. He then covered it with a blanket and left. Surprisingly, while the search for the American woman was going on, the perpetrator visited the crime scene one more time to make sure Soraya was dead and her body was lying where he had left it. When Tal Sali learned from the news that his victim had been found, he realized that the police would quickly get on his trail, so he decided to flee the country, borrowing money from his sister, who always felt sorry for him. By the way, he was never able to realize the stolen goods. The camera was broken in the process of falling. The smartphone had a password, which the criminal unsuccessfully tried to unravel while at home hence the signal, and all the other stolen items he threw away when he went on the run. The defendant did not deny his guilt, and judging from his accounts, he did not regret what he had done, nor did he suffer from pangs of conscience. As key evidence DNA forensic evidence was presented, which confirmed that it was his skin that was found under the fingernails of the murdered woman, and his seminal fluid was found on her body. Also, Sarai's cell phone was last switched on in the vicinity of his residence. In addition, the case file was supplemented with a video surveillance camera recording of the attack itself. After all the evidence was presented, it was decided that a psychiatric examination was necessary because of the belief that Tal Sali was insane. This idea was suggested by his actions, behavior, and the calmness with which he described in detail the atrocities he had committed but experts concluded that he was sane and fully aware of his actions when he attacked his victim. In the summer of 2014, the judge finally delivered the final verdict. Tal Sali was found guilty on all counts against him and sentenced to life imprisonment. Sarai's relatives considered this decision fair. The body of the murdered American woman, after all the necessary expert examinations, was transported to her homeland in New York and all related costs were borne by a Turkish airline. Sarai was buried in compliance with all religious rites and traditions. Family members of the deceased created an internet site dedicated to her memory, where they published her works, which had not appeared anywhere before. The photos were a great success and people from different parts of the world were ready to buy them. The money received from the sale of pictures the family saved for college education for orphaned children, Sarai. As for Stephen, he categorically denied that in his and his wife's family life was a crisis, which pushed the young woman on that fateful trip. Soon, Stephen became close to a girl from the Christian community who supported him in a difficult period and often came to his home to help him with his children and household chores. Two weeks before the first anniversary of his wife's funeral, Stephen walked down the aisle with his new chosen one. When the perpetrator was finally sentenced, Stephen was already married and preparing to become a father again. The story of Sarai Sierra was the basis for a series of TV programs and talk shows, as well as detective documentaries. In addition, feature projects have also been based on it. Thanks for watching, guys. Jack was with you. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell not to miss new stories from around the world. See you soon. Take care.